everybody, welcome back. So today we're actually talking about standpipe hose connections. Um, and you can see here, uh, we're gonna talk first about the different classes of standpipes, uh, and then we're gonna talk about the requirements. A lot of people uh, don't know about the requirements for uh, both an inspection and an annual test of your standpipe connections. Um, and what's, what's really cool about this one, you know, uh, uh, is that we came up with it because there is no uh, accrediting organization requirements directly attributable to, to these. So uh, there's full flow requirements and things like that, but, but you know, we, we like the idea of this because this comes straight from code. Uh, this comes from NFPA 25 2011 edition, um, chapter 1356, so 13.5.6. We'll post those down below uh, for you, but we like that because accrediting organizations aren't there to make sure that you're adhering to every single dot in the code, right? That's your job as the owner, as a facilities manager, to go in and make sure you, you know the information, that you're hiring vendors or ITM contractors to know the information. Um, and that's kind of that's what's cool about this one. So you're not gonna find a EP number, you're not gonna find a PE reference for DMV. Uh, that's not there. This is just in the code. Uh, so let's talk about the classes first of standpipe. Class one standpipe is where uh, what most hospitals are going to have, especially new hospitals, it's just a two and a half inch hose connection. Uh, and most of the time you're going to find it inside of the stairwell. Um, so what's interesting about this, and we're not going to talk about, about this today, it's a whole other video, but it's, it's really good, is a lot of your lower floors, if you've got a high rise hospital, a lot of your lower floors uh, are going to have uh, pressure reducing valve um, hose connections. You may have a pressure reducing valve somewhere else, but we're going to talk about pressure reducing valves in a different video. So we won't talk about that, just, just know that that's something to, to, to keep, keep an eye out for. A class two system is where you only have a inch and a half uh, occupant hose connection. You're always going to have a hose. You see that we have our hose removed, um, and uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. But you're not going to, I've never seen a hospital that just has a class two hose connection. It may be out there, I, I just have never seen one. Where you're mostly going to find it is um, uh, different occupancy types, like a residential occupancy, high rise, or, or something like that. Host, some hotels, older hotels will have them where it has the hose in there. Uh, but don't. So you can see we don't have it. So that leads us to class three, which is where you have both throughout the whole hospital. Um, we, at the time our hospital was built, this hospital, uh, we weren't required to be fully sprinkled. Uh, but we were required to have a class three standpipe system, which means that we had both the occupant hose and the two and a half inch connection throughout the whole building. Um, we have a waiver from our AHJ because we're in the process of sprinkling our, our hospital and we've removed uh, the hose. Now, there's, there's some caveat there of why, but again, if you wanna know the specifics on that, just reach out to me directly. But we do have a letter from our AHJ saying that we can remove the hoses. So, uh, that all being said, as we're going through and sprinkling the building, we're actually removing this inch and a half um, connection, completely capping it off, just the wall even deeper and we're migrating all of our two and a half inch connections into the stairwell. So that leads us to the testing requirements. So there's actually a quarterly inspection that's required uh, for your two and a half inch connections. And it's actually very similar to fire department connections. Um, so we're actually gonna see if we can open this nice and tight, which is what we want. So we actually tested this valve already. Oh boy. not be able to, but there we go. What we're looking for is that, if you tight like this, by the way, you can actually uh, use a spanner wrench, uh, which is what fire departments have. We actually just tested this, this is our second shot of the video, but what you're looking for is that the seal on the cap is good. You're looking that the cap is in place, you're looking for the threads. You're looking for any visual instructions. We're gonna get this. And that's really not it. Woo. And you're gonna see some water pour out here in just a second. There it is. 
خب flowing water, what we're making sure of is that this valve fully exercises, uh, and the reason that we're doing that is if a firefighter actually hooks up to this valve with the two, two and a half inch hose, then there's a fire somewhere. They don't, they don't just hook up valve or hoses to the valve for no reason. There's a fire. So every second matters at that point. So if they have to grab their wrench and crack this valve open or it's frozen shut, then we're just wasting time. That fire out. So that's why we do these annual annual pull pull out. And what you do is make sure that it's tight, the cap is tight. Make sure the seal is in there. You know, that's why you do the quarterly check first. And then all you do is a full exercise. Open it up all the way. So the stem locks out. Done and close it. Now, I'm not gonna try to take this cap off again, <laughs> but ideally, you look again and you see if there was any obstructions from, from anything that came out. So, um, and then you make sure it's nice and tight. Again, it's always good to make sure your cap is tight too, so that way anybody who's walking through the building can't just open the valve and flood the area. So, last thing, uh, we actually have all of this tied to an asset. This, this hose valve is an asset. How it tied to our CMMS system. Uh, it's actually tra tracked quarterly and annually. All right. Anything else? That was a pretty pretty interesting video there. <laughs> anything else? Thrill? Am I missing anything? I think you covered it all. All right. Say hey to everybody. And, and guys, I want to thank hey. you again. As always, you know, he's coming up with these great ideas for videos to share out to everybody. So. Uh, thanks, Drew, and everybody, happy learning. <laughs>